you know, give your final comments before you wrap up this jury session. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, it is a very futuristic project, and how we would get all of that into space is a huge question. We don't know how we're actually going to build this. But um, I would like to reiterate something that you mentioned earlier, talking about all the things we take for granted when we design for Earth. We take gravity for granted, we take the atmosphere for granted. In many parts of the world, we take water for granted, although not every place, some people struggle to get fresh water. Uh, in space, all of a sudden, all of these things become very explicit. You can't take anything for granted. You have to design the atmosphere. You have to design the water. You have to even design the gravity if you want to keep people healthy for years in space. And many of these lessons can be brought back to Earth. As Earth builds up and we have sustainability issues on Earth, even with Earth's atmosphere, um, many of the issues, many of the lessons that we're learning in space can be applied back to Earth to make buildings more environmentally friendly and more self-contained and, and you know, carbon neutral and all of these things. Preserve the water, preserve the air. All of these things that we learn in, in space can be applied to Earth, spaceship Earth. We have to maintain the Earth in some sort of a balance, which we have not done very well in the industrial age. Um, the second point I would like to make is, um, you know, what do architects bring to this whole problem? Um, even if it might not be worked out in great detail in the furniture and design and all of these things, there is no one single engineering discipline that looks at all the issues that architects are trying to look at. So the architect is the integrator, one person who sort of sees the big picture, he sees the health issues and, and the environmental issues, um, and somehow brings that together in some sort of a coherent, um, cohesive concept that other specialists can work out many of these details, but somebody, and that somebody should be an architect, has the big picture and he sees all of the issues that need to be solved. And so we need architects um, looking at space application, because if we don't, it will be divided among different engineering disciplines, and what they tend to do is they take the human and they divide it up into the systems. They just see a, a human as a system of systems and not a human being. And so it's very important that architects be involved in this process. Thank you. And so I, I would like to congratulate you. Thank you, Mr. Hall. So, experience can be in the inner circles. 
So, and even the positioning of the whole uh, station uh, at the 15,000 kilometer level, it was in a real debate. So, should you go much lower or you could go much higher? Even if so, it was a debate and uh, it, was a, it was a long discussion you know, uh, coming to this uh, situation. I especially congratulate you to, to, to make yourself, what I should say, stick to this situation and your uh, your uh, uh, of this whole thing and your motivation was very good, uh, absolutely. Okay. So, uh, this is an uh, interesting solution, it's a very, uh, what I should say, uh, challenging, uh, eye-opening and some new ideas for the whole thing. So, I would rather conclude the whole thing and I thank Dr. Hall and all our guests and teachers, faculty members and the students and the 